Africa's worst sporting tragedy occurred right in our backyard, the Accra Sports Stadium. This is when 126 football fans died on 9th May 2001 during a game between Accra House of Oak and Ark rivals Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Not happy with the 2-1 score line, fans of Kotoko expressed their displeasure in an unsporting manner. The police were overwhelmed by the melee and used tear gas to quell the brawl. Panic ensued, resulting in a stampede and the deaths of 127 people. The Commission of Inquiry into the incident recommended improvements into stadium security and first aid facilities. This led to calls for nationwide rapid response teams and thus the establishment of the National Ambulance Service. Historically in Ghana, we've never had any organized emergency medical service system until 2004. So that's why in 2001, the stadium disaster really recorded um, high casualties. Because at that point, there were no paramedics in the stadium to provide the care. Since 2004, Ghana has been trying to build an emergency medical service system through the National Ambulance Service. And what we started with was a pilot program in three regions in the country. And the three regions were Ashanti, Greater Accra, and the Eastern region. When we started, the criteria was accident-prone areas. So that is why we started in these three regions. However, it wasn't too long we discovered that if we maintain that criteria, it means a lot of the rural areas were going to be cut off from the um, service. So we had to add the second criteria, which is uh, maternal mortality. So basically, because in every district you have high rates of maternal mortality, we have now used the concept of expanding to cover district capitals as our major criteria. Established in 2004, the Ghana Ambulance Service is an agency under the Health Ministry. It was born out of a collaboration between the Ministry of Health and the Ghana National Fire Service of the Ministry of the Interior. As a statutory agency, the National Ambulance Service is specifically mandated to establish and operate a nationwide comprehensive ambulance service. Since its inception, it has increased from seven stations in three regions to 126 stations with presence in every region in the country and two control rooms in Accra and Ashanti. After working for a decade, patronage of the ambulance service is still not encouraging. The public is yet to fully understand the importance and essence of the ambulance service. We found out that the 193 emergency number is the last thing on the minds of most people in times of emergency. In Ghana, more often than not, the first choice in emergency situations is the use of personal vehicles or commercial transport, particularly taxi cabs, perhaps because it is readily available. But unfortunately, some patients do not make it to the hospital and die en route. Health experts attribute this to how the patient is handled on the way to the hospital. But despite the fact that many may panic in an emergency and prefer to use a commercial vehicle rather than an ambulance, experts say waiting for the arrival of the experts is worth its while. EMT is the term used for emergency medical technicians and is the lower form of a paramedic. And they are the pre-hospital um, physicians. They provide out-of-hospital acute medical care. They are trained in such a way that when there is an incident or accident, they arrive at the scene, they provide care at the scene, and in route to the hospital, they also continue to provide care. So that explains the advantage they have over you using a commercial vehicle. How does one assess the service? It's through the emergency line 193. Now, barring any um, technical hitches, with all the mobile um, companies, you're supposed to be able to get the tool free 193. Initially, we started with just the landline, but over time, Vodafone, MTN, Tigo, and virtually all the other networks have now activated the tool free 193. All is not smooth sailing at the National Ambulance Service. There is a toll list from crank calls to the stolen of money to subsidize the operations and being unable to locate the exact address of the emergency are some of the problems. For the next several years to come, whether we like it or not, we still have to use landmarks. Because no matter what, 
you can have good demarcation. You will still have to. Let me give an example. I live at Can Thomas, Fifth Secular Road. Do you know where it is? Okay. It's near the Ameri New American Embassy. Do you know where it is? So you see an example. So it tells you that the road marking will not solve the problem. I hope you are getting my point. Because here we have a large population of illiterates who, first of all, don't even understand the markings of the road. Secondly, they don't have GPS system. So you, you have to continue to use the landmarks. It is not the road markings that will solve the problem. Are you getting the point? So historically, we have been used to using landmarks as our, our guide. Elsewhere, from day one, they use the systems of road markings. So if you extrapolate that, you're going to have challenges. So when you see this mobile hospital at top speed with its siren blaring, do make way for the patient to arrive alive and say a prayer, for this could help save a precious life.